Fine dining restaurants can use a lot of surprising ingredients, including some that are delicious treats and others that you might want to skip entirely. Here are some of the unexpected ingredients you don't expect to get involved when you dine out at a restaurant. Despite the popularity of the farm-to-table concept, many restaurants are still using frozen vegetables. Fresh vegetables expire more quickly, for one thing. The time-sensitive nature of vegetables makes them more expensive to ship, which means restaurants have to charge more and hand you a heftier bill. In an industry with frighteningly small profit margins, this is not exactly a good way to attract more customers. But frozen vegetables aren't only used to save restaurants money. Believe it or not, it's also about flavor. Fresh vegetables are usually picked before they are ripe, which helps distributors earn a few precious extra days before their product goes bad. Frozen vegetables, on the other hand, are picked at their ripest before being immediately processed. This means that frozen fruits or vegetables may, surprisingly enough, have more flavor than their fresh counterparts. Harvard Medical School reports that frozen vegetables also lose fewer nutrients than fresh ones during shipping. So as counterintuitive as it may seem to a diner, you don't have to freak out if the veggies on your plate were once frozen. If a restaurant can't get local produce, frozen veggies might be a perfectly healthy, flavorful option. Perusing your favorite restaurant's dessert menu, you may have certain ideas. Sure, you don't necessarily expect that the kitchen is churning their own ice cream, but you may think they're at least making the cakes from scratch. Well, not so fast. As it turns out, many restaurants and even bakeries are using the same secret ingredient, boxed cake mix. Professionals like Cake Boss argue that mixes are only pre-measured ingredients and shouldn't be so stigmatized. Whether or not that bothers you depends on your own taste and the final tally of your meal's bill. If a restaurant is just following the directions on the back of the box and topping the result with some canned frosting, then you might as well do that yourself. But if they're using high-end ingredients, custom additions, and homemade frosting, that can make all the difference. As much as a cheat as it may seem, if the result is a better-tasting cake, then why shouldn't restaurants and bakeries build up from a boxed mix base? There's definitely a prejudice against canned foods, with some people turning their noses up at the often high sodium contents and occasional weird tastes. Despite this, the canned food market is expected to continue growing. Still, with everything from fruit cocktails to beans and seafood, if it comes in a can, it's often seen as cheap and inferior. But cheap doesn't automatically mean low-end. In fact, some well-known restaurants from New Orleans to Tokyo unabashedly have canned seafood on the menu. Some even serve it straight out of the can. When eating at a fancy restaurant near the coast, you might expect all the seafood to be fresh caught. But while they might be just a stone's throw away from a supply of fresh seafood, preparation time still comes into play, complicating things for chefs. As many Americans prefer their fish skinned, deboned, and filleted too, that extra prep time comes into consideration pretty quickly. Pre-processed options are a time saver when you're a harried chef facing hungry diners. To that end, some places are open about their use of canned fish. Condé Nast Traveler reports quite a few restaurants worldwide have canned fish proudly available for diners. That restaurants use butter surprises no one. However, the kicker in some fancy restaurants' cases is just how much butter is used. In The New Yorker, Chef Anthony Bourdain wrote, Butter is the first and last thing in almost every pan. In a good restaurant, what this all adds up to is that you could be putting away almost a stick of butter. If you were to, for some ungodly reason, eat a whole stick of, let's say, some unsalted Land O'Lakes butter, that would be 88 grams of fat and 800 calories. And remember that all of that is just the butter. Whatever meal cooked and coated in that butter is going to increase the number of calories you're consuming. However, keep in mind that Bourdain was ultimately arguing in favor of butter and its flavor. And let me say this, is there anything better than butter? While a high-end restaurant could pay extra for more expensive meats, adding more butter is a significantly cheaper option. Butter will often be used to keep a chicken or steak tender and moist. It's also what gives the meat that appetizing sheen, ultimately meaning that your fancy meal could be coated in way more butter than expected. If there is one food that many Americans would consider the opposite of fine dining, it's got to be spam. It's looked down upon as some sort of mystery meat, but it's actually just six common ingredients. Mixed pork and ham, water, potato starch, sugar, salt, and sodium nitrite. While it's nothing fancy, it's also nothing too strange. Its cheap price point and long shelf life make it seem as far from fancy as possible. At least, that's how it is often perceived in the United States. 
Meanwhile, in South Korea, spam is considered a high-quality ingredient and even an appreciated holiday gift. It seems that luxury is all in the eye of the beholder. For their part, daring chefs in America have taken up the cause of canned meats, adding them to their menus and winning over converts one bite at a time. From Los Angeles to New York City, spam is increasingly on some desirable and expensive menus. Perhaps it's time to give it a try next time you see it on a menu, much as it may not seem to fit in with champagne and caviar. While both mayonnaise and aioli have their place in cooking, one of them sounds distinctly fancier than the other, doesn't it? The more high-class sounding aioli is a garlic-based sauce, while mayo is egg-based. Both are mixed with oil and result in a thick and creamy condiment. While the two concoctions may seem similar, and indeed, aioli is sometimes used when talking about mayonnaise, professionals know the difference. Mayo is found in most refrigerators across the United States, while real aioli made from just olive oil and garlic is commonly only found in restaurants or the homes of professional chefs. Now, many upscale restaurants may claim to have aioli, but it isn't always the real deal. Some places simply spice up a jar of mayo and call it aioli to make it sound like it's of higher quality than it really is. You might not be willing to pay as much if you knew the aioli on the menu was the same brand of mayo you have in your fridge, but with a few spices thrown in. There are parts of an animal we eat, and parts many of us don't usually think about eating. Animal bones are typically what we leave on our plates after enjoying a delicious bone-in steak or chicken drumstick. It wouldn't occur to many diners that their favorite fancy restaurant buys just the bones of animals in order to throw them into a cooking pot. That's because any restaurant taking the time to make soup from scratch is likely going to do it by cooking up some bones. Of course, depending on your familiarity with bone broth, this may not be quite so shocking. Broth made from bones is full of vitamins, collagen, and amino acids that can be pretty great for your body. That's something I'm very passionate about, helping people see the connection between their health and what they eat. It also has a rich flavor, which is why many high-end establishments keep animal bones on hand to make homemade broth. Bone marrow can be a decadent, savory treat you'd hate to miss on your next restaurant visit. As unexpected as it might be to walk into a restaurant kitchen and see packages of bones, it is actually a sign of a quality restaurant. The alternative is a frozen broth of potentially unknown age, made of unknown ingredients, sold and shipped from a factory. So if you happen to notice a few animal bones in the kitchen, take that as a good sign. As much as you expect a chef to be in the kitchen grilling or pan frying a fresh cut of meat, it could be that the meat is instead coming out of the freezer and going into the microwave. To be fair, meat can take a long time to cook properly. This means that any pre-preparation, like breading the meat, makes the process take even longer. This leaves many kitchens looking for shortcuts. Unfortunately, that shortcut is often freezing pre-made meat entrees. Dishes like chicken parmesan are notorious for being pre-made and frozen, so much so that many chefs in the know never order chicken parmesan, even at a high-end restaurant. This isn't only an American problem. France, known worldwide for its gourmet cuisine, has been struggling to keep restaurants and bakeries from becoming mere vending machines of reheated factory food. And if that's all customers are going to get, there's no reason to dine at an expensive restaurant when the same thing can be ordered from a discount menu. Much like parts of the animal many Americans don't think of eating, there are also plants people don't consider to be prime for their dinner plates. While we don't recommend plucking a flower or two off the centerpiece, you may be surprised to learn that certain flowers, even roses, are also fit to be served. Yes, roses. If you saw a bag of rose petals in the kitchen of an upscale restaurant, you might assume they were there as decoration. But think twice. Rose petals have been used in foods and medicines for thousands of years. Some restaurants are finally catching up to the trend and adding rose petals to their dishes, too. Rose petals can be used in sweet or savory dishes, steeped to make tea, cooked into jam, or used to make flavored butter. In American restaurants and bakeries, rose petals are appearing in delicious desserts like Bertie G's Rose Petal Pie in Santa Monica, California. With their deep colors and romantic connotations, rose petals are a lovely addition to a meal that may surprise some diners, but will surely win them over with the help of a skilled chef. Highly processed and with an artificial taste, texture, and appearance, American cheese is popular among children and adults with a craving for nostalgia. Uh, 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 hands off. 
the free singles are for daddy. Oh, but ma. But you know he is watching his fat and cholesterol. But ma, they make a good sandwich. It may surprise you to learn that it is also popular among some award-winning chefs. Despite their ability to sample a wider variety of cheeses than the average person, some chefs are still convinced that American cheese is the best choice, at least for certain dishes. Stop! Good God, man! You almost got the cheese touch. The what? The cheese touch. That means the same restaurants that are serving caviar and champagne may also have slices of this cheese product, complete with their telltale plastic sleeves. At New York Chop House The Grill, you can enjoy one of the most expensive cheeseburgers in America, topped with this very product. This cheeseburger features ground ribeye, a pricey, high-quality cut of meat, topped with American cheese, which is neither pricey nor high-quality. Many high-end chefs agree that American cheese's melting ability and powerful nostalgia factor make it the only choice for burgers, no matter how extravagant the rest of the ingredients may be. No one picks what restaurant to eat at based on the whipped cream served on the dessert, right? But when you're eating a high-priced specialty slice of cake covered in gold leaf, the familiar taste of processed whipped topping can stand out like a sore thumb. Diners often recognize the taste of the store-bought topping they know from plastic tubs. They also know that it often sells for a bargain, which then takes them out of the fine dining experience they were looking for. And yet, kitchens everywhere, from fast food chains to five-star establishments, often have factory-made whipped toppings somewhere in their kitchens. What's the big deal? First, it's called whipped topping and not whipped cream for a reason. Whipped topping has the price advantage of not using cream, which even untrained palates may notice is missing. Heavy cream is expensive, but makes better desserts and can even improve savory dishes like soups. So the presence of heavy cream is a good clue that a restaurant is making more items from scratch, other than using store-bought whipped cream. Unfortunately, many high-end restaurants are tempted by the cheap, time-saving option, even for a dessert covered in literal gold. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite foods are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.